Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Cardiff Central, the unofficial Cardiff Rugby Supporters podcast. Uh, I'm joined, uh, as always, by Carwin. Carwin, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. And we have a new guest, uh, I think, going forward, will be a bit of a regular appearer, is uh, Harley Worthy. How are you doing? Hello, boys. Uh, nice, nice to finally see you both after listening to the pod for the last few episodes. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to put a, a face to a name. Um, you are a regular on The Wrap as well, um, the Cardiff representative on there. So do you want to just do a bit of an intro for, I imagine most of our listeners will have already listened to there, but if there is anyone who's not um, a rap listener who's joining us, if uh, just to let them know who you are. Um, yeah, so I'm Harley. I'm Richie, Richie from Barry, currently uh, currently recording by Exeter uh, due, to, due to work and things. Uh, I pro- I'm probably not one of the uh, diehards who were there pre-regionalisation. I sort of came into it during my uni. Came to, um, and went on. Basically, came onto Twitter purely to speak, talk about rugby, <laughs> and uh, I, th- I, th- I think uh, I, I must have made the right, the right or wrong people <laughs> notice, and uh, sort of got drafted into various podcasting. Okay, that's good. Uh, do you go to Cardiff Uni? I I went to Cardiff Uni. Yeah. Um, so I did undergraduate and my undergraduate and PhD there, and then I I said then. No, that's funny because we were saying I think that's three. All three of us are alumni. I think Lee is as well, isn't he? So, yeah, um, I think yeah, I think he said he was. Yeah. So, uh, what what sort of year did you? Not that I want to age you. What sort of time period are you at Cardiff? <laughs> so, undergrad started twenty ten, finished twenty fourteen. So okay. that was a four year course. Um, if you if you hear any sort of weird warbles in the background, that's that's my baby. He's not quite uh, quite ready to go to bed yet. Um, and then yeah, PhD then up until 2018, 2019. Okay, that's cool. Because I was there two thousand and nine to two thousand and twelve, um, and then actually, what do you live in Exeter itself? Because I used to live in until last year. I lived in Clumpton. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, no, I yeah, no, Clumpton. Um, yeah, just down the road there. I, so that's funny. Yeah, Small I, world. I actually had to drive through it to get around the traffic accident on the M five yesterday. <laughs> yeah, um, was, yeah. Uh, no, I live in a little. I live in a little town called Offshore St Mary, which is about. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Minute yeah. Drive out. yeah, that's good. So. Um, been down there, how often do you manage to get to to games? Are you season to colder or is it more infrequent? I guess it's a bit it's a bit more infrequent, so I tend to come to like um to like if it's like Friday game, I can't I just can't yeah. finish working time and things like that. So I try and try and go to a fair few, try and get to the European home games and then as many of the derbies as possible. At least the home okay. derbies. Yeah, um, that's good. I mean, it got a bit it got a bit uh, tetchy last season with the uh Huge increase in cost of petrol. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's yeah. I I said I have been season ticket holder in the past. Looking at moving to Cardiff potentially okay. with a new job, so then I'll probably be back back on the back on the South Terrace. Yeah, good. South stands. We like the South, don't we? Um, Carwin's there as well in the press box, but um, I feel like I'm grilling you a little bit. What's your PhD and what are you doctor of? Uh, doctor of biochemistry. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I did bi- protein, protein engineering sort of thing. I um, okay. specialise in. We won't go into that too much detail. I I did biology, um, and I've forgotten everything. But I did um, sea turtles was my dissertation, and um, couldn't really tell you any more about that. But um, I don't think I know enough to even blag half a conversation about biochemistry. So it was bio bioengineering, you said. Yeah. yeah, a bit of biochemistry, a bit of protein engineering, and yeah, I sort of dabbling yeah. with things. Currently doing some stuff with mammalian cells. Okay. It's... We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> I've um... got very little input in this. I've just realised. <laughs> I was thinking my my music degree and uh, post grad in broader journalism is not going to help me much in this. <laughs> well, we've got uh, an eclectic mix, which is good. Um, so we'll move on to the Dragons game. Uh, just gone. We'll see. Was it nine sixteen to Cardiff? First win of the season. Thriller. Uh, yeah, thriller in Newport. Um, <laughs> I think generally the, the consensus is that it wasn't a very good game. Um, I think that's probably the end of the statement. We'll get our excuses out of the way early. The weather was poor, uh, to say the least. Um, there's a lot of errors from both sides. Um, I think, I don't know, I was kind of going into it when the team sheet came out, we had a lot more internationals back. I was kind of thinking, well, we should do a job here. And that kind of never materialised. What are your 
both of your thoughts generally. Um, I know, Karen, you said you didn't watch too much of the game, but from your kind of what you did see or your uh, reaction or what 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 you've read what you've read about it. Yeah, um, I think the general response is it was a bit dire, and I I think that's pretty much the summation to give. Um, most of those sort of games, they are decided by a moment of brilliance or a moment of calamity. And if you're a Dragons fan, it definitely was the latter. Um, poor shit kick. Good, to be fair, good hassling, good harrying by Cardiff's defence. Good hands from Teddy Williams and some good gas from Mason Grady. But at the end of the day, that that was probably the high point of what was a pretty dire game. You've got your high, you've got your highlights. You've got your Cam Winnett soaring above all the else and carrying on his brilliant start to the season. You've got your comedic moment with Jared Ross, which I'm sure you two would touch on a bit more, whether he was unlucky or whether it was well, a lack of attacking prowess, or for want of a better word. Um, but yeah, a win to win and was never in doubt, was it? it was 17 in the on the bounce now? Uh, yeah, I'd say I don't know if I'd say never in doubt. I think it was. a a few moments where I was a bit um benched, shall we say. Um I think yeah, I mean, I think overall we looked pretty dominant in a lot of the areas. How about you, Harley? Um it, it was a weird one. So I mean first first experience of the game was um on listening to it on Radio Wales driving driving back back from Wales visiting family and it 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 seemed like we were pretty much dominant without being able to get that final getting over that final hurdle. And watching it back, I mean, it was maybe maybe not quite quite that bad, but there were definitely a few chances we we probably you know you'd think you know there might be you know Thomas Thomas Williams went blind, we didn't you know maybe actually going through the phases a bit more might have helped or missing you know didn't quite get into the corner, but I mean mostly it, it seemed like we we did the bare minimum that that was needed. I I thought after our scrum, I thought we'd be a bit. Stronger up front based on how well our scrum and more went. And, you know, Dragons actually managed to get a nudge on us in the scrum. Um, but I think part of that is the fact they started four second rows and due to, due to injuries and everything. But if, I mean, it's a typical Wales Dragons game, isn't it? It's it's never one that you're going to be putting up, putting up for game of the year. Yeah. Um, I think, as you said, overall, there were, there were quite a few moments where we could have seen a lot more tries. They've just I think both sides were maybe a bit edgy or a bit cagey. Uh Cabango didn't take that offload from Grady and I think what they were trying to do in the first half was working. It just wasn't working and then resulting in a try. Um I think um you said a lot to be said about uh the defense. I thought that was really good. Um we didn't let try in from sort of generic open play against Benetton. They did a little chip and a chase and then a more and, you know, we didn't let the Dragons cross the line either. And I think two of our tries came from the defence. Um, obviously, in this game, we they did that. It was a bit of a daft kick, really. But um, the defence was up, and that's where we got the charge down from. And then against Benetton, they, they did something daft, and that uh, player tried to do a little offload from the deck, and our players were up and capitalising on it. So that's good to see. Apparently, we're second. I looked to come to the URC website, so don't stats um, check me on this, but... We've got the second best defense in the URC at the moment, out of 16, um, which is good. And that's an area where, in the past, I think we've been accused of being quite um, soft at times. So that's good to see yeah. um, and build up. And I think what I wanted to see, A, a win, which we got. And um, we started the Benetton game really well, first half, and then dropped off massively. And I think this time we actually built into the game well. Um, the tactics in the first half weren't quite working, but they were very nearly working for most of it. And then the Dragons just couldn't really get out of their half. And then when we were trying to get out of the same half in the last 40 minutes, um, I think we were getting a lot more success. Um, I think a lot of that was down to uh, Thomas Williams' bo uh, box kicking. And Cam Winnett, as you said, I think he was really good. Um, again, he was good in the Benetton game, obviously man of the match in this game. Uh, Well-deserved, I think. Uh, so a question for you both then. Um, I kind of asked this on, on Twitter and didn't get too much of a response, but obviously we've got him and we've got Beetham, um, both kind of talented prospects at fullback. Um, how do you manage the minutes between the two of them? Because uh, you know, if Cam when it's going well, you don't want to drop him. Oh, dropping might not be the right word. Maybe 
give B some more minutes if he's playing well, but then you don't want a player that's not getting any game time. So how 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 do you see us should be managing that going forward? Um, I, I think it's an interesting one. Pre-season, you saw a lot of Beetham starting games, didn't you? I think he started both, didn't he? And he was brilliant. And I was really excited about him. He's, build-wise, they're very different sorts. You know, Beetham is a sort of, for one, a Lee Byrne-esque, you know, that big build that can cut an angle, can break through arm tackles. Um, when it's more of a whippet, stepper, you know, he's going to break ankles and break through that way. The the interesting element, I think, with it is, bar seeing Beetham a bit on, I think he's played a little bit of wing, bit of centre, Cam, when it, I've pretty much only seen him play fullback, um, and that probably means you're unlikely to see both in the same team, especially at the moment with, uh, well, kind of a pretty stacked at centres now, after after preseason looking as if we there weren't going to be many around. But um, I don't see Beetham playing much there, maybe a bit of wing, if that comes available. So you are talking about one or the other. At the moment, I don't see why you drop Winnet mm. after after the first couple of games. And I, I you know, I know that's harsh on Beatham and obviously he's spent nine months out, but at the end of the day, that's professional rugby. And that's kind of I, I know that might sound a bit sound a bit harsh, but that's how it happens. And you you know, you you get an injury, you might miss your opportunity and players come in and then you've got to pick up when they get injured or when they're unavailable for whatever reason. And I think that's the reality of what we're looking at. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm i a big fan of Winnet. I really like him. I actually think if you're talking a fullback for Wales's future, Beetham's probably a player that Gatlin's going to like a bit more, just looking at his size and general build. I don't know if uh, Gatlin's going to be as big a fan of Winnet making, but that's, you know, I, last time I tried to guess Gatlin's brain was not the most successful. So, um, yeah, I, I personally, I, I don't see why you drop Cam at the moment. And for the way that I like to think Cardiff want to play, I think at the moment he suits it and I'd like to keep him, see him there for a few games at least. Um, so yeah, in, in short, to, to do with uh, balancing it out, there's not much balance in my in my isolation. I think I think just stick with the guy in form. No, I think that's kind of uh, where I was kind of ending up. I think if you've got a player who's playing well, you'd be foolish to drop him necessarily because you're you're upsetting the balance of the team. Yes, you kind of want to give them both minutes, but you can't if they're in the same position. And I think um, you know giving one all of the minutes is if that's beneficial to the team. I think that's, you know, one way to go. I think also, yeah, I don't know if Gatland is going to look at Beetham if he's not been playing for us. Um, no. I'd be surprised at that. Would he be looking at Winnet this season? If he is, uh, when Winnet's away with the Six Nations, is that then a time for Beetham to have his opportunity? Uh, what do you think, Ali? Um, so I think, I think as well, the game, like what, what um it, you know it depends what Jockey wants and his full what he wants his fullback doing. So Beatham's a bit more of a playmaking back, you know, in a similar way to how Pivot was using half penny um towards the end of his tenure, you know, using more for distribution, you know, he's a clever kicker. Um, you know, so if Sherrett wants to move more towards that play dual playmaker system, you know, part you know, leaning into it heavily, then you might see him start coming in for some games. But I think I think unless when it's carrying a knock or you know, just needs a rest because you know he's had so many minutes. I'd say you keep him on. You know, it's the same sort of argument with um between Thomas Young and Ellis Jenkins when Jenkins was coming had come back to fitness but couldn't get in the side because you weren't going to drop Thomas Young. He was our best, one of our best players last season. I I think you can't really do that. As for not playing for Cardiff, um, you know that's not stopped Gatton before. He <laughs> you know, but then that tends to be players who've already broken into his team. So if you know, I think if if Gatlin's seen enough of Beetham beforehand that he thinks actually you no, know, that's what I want my my next fullback to be, then I I can see him pulling him pulling him out even like game time. I don't think he will though because as I said it, usually it's the players like George North who haven't played for a while, but Gatlin already knows what they can do. So yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, I think Aaron trying to cause, but yeah, Beetham was in. Beetham was out for a while. Uh, how much? Did he play? Was it mainly the under twenties? Yeah, you know, I think he he did play for Cardiff. Was that 
is he part of the Harlequins um, ragtag misfit squad? When it was fullback, was yeah. I think yeah. he played. I think he might have played the Toulouse game. They might have played the Toulouse game, and I think that might be how he got injured when it came in for the Harlequins fixture. And then basically that was, you know, and he sort of was there or thereabouts. Yeah. And I think he was in that Jordan Benetton game that definitely did ne- not happen <laughs> at the end yeah. of the season. I, uh, I remember he was in one of them because Beaton got a red card um, in one of those games. Um, something. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be surprised if Gatland was looking at Beatham, but um, you never know. Um, yeah, I, I, I may be pushing them on a bit there, to be fair. I think it was more of a discussion of types of players. I think that's, that's I think you're looking at when it's more McNichol, like you can do that brilliant offload or a brilliant moment, but also there may be a bit, but he's to be fair, what, what's been most impressive about Winnet this season is his consistency and his quality in, in the year. So, you know, maybe he's now showing that he can do all of it. See, to me, he reminds me of Liam Williams more. Mm. Like, he reminds me of a very young Sanjay. Like, he's just got that, it, it's, his high, work under high ball was faultless that from yesterday. So, you know, you know, I'm very excited to see how he goes. He's, he's also, yeah. and you know, probably going to be our number one. He's also got a bit of the other side of Sanjay as well, hasn't he? That yeah. little like shit housery, you know, to use that language. I think that's a fair, fair summation of it. Really, he's not, um, he's not afraid to, yeah, you know, put it in the opposition's faces and put him, put himself about. Yeah, and I, I, I do think Cardiff need a few more players like that, to be honest. I think that's one that long said one of our weaknesses. I think is we probably go into ourselves a little bit too much and think we're going down. There's not someone who's, you know, basically we need Bradley. Day, we need like a modern Bradley Davis type player who's just just in your face. Um. So, speaking of kind of an abrasive player, um, I want to move on to Tinas De Beer. Uh, just have a little bit of chat about him. So, uh, I'll start by saying this. I I really like uh, De Beer at the moment. I think he's been quite a good. I think he's a good signing. I think long term he will come into his own. I think we'll see that over the the, the weeks and months. Um, a little bit inconsistent, perhaps, in the first couple of games. I think the first half against Benetton he was really good, and then up until about the fiftieth minute, and then he kind of flagged. Um, Yesterday, he was a little bit, again, inconsistent and then maybe some questions about his place kicking. Um, but I think my view on that is, um, what I've said before is, he's not come to us from the Stormers or the Sharks. And I think some people kind of think, oh, he's, he's a South African fly-off, he's coming over and he's going to be um, you know, a bit like Manny Lebock. I think is a step up for him. And he did quite a good um, post-match interview um, after the game yesterday, saying you know he's he's learning a lot and getting a lot of support from players like Thomas Young and Thomas Williams and and some of the internationals that have come back. But um, you know he's not he's not the finished article yet. But I think you do have to I don't like the phrase trust the process, but give give someone time to to build up into it, and I think it will come good. That's my view on it. What what do you both think about um, about him at the moment and in the future? I think there's 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 one awkward thing with him is is you've got to look at that expectation element and you you say he's not the finished article well historically if you buy bring in a player from overseas they are the finished article or they are feasibly going to reach in three years time going to qualify for Wales and that's the aim that's the that's the succession plan this is not the case it's now five years for a start but. In this in this player's case, he's not the finished article, and he's only just come in from the last couple of years. And what is he? Twenty seven? Am I right in saying that? And uh, yeah, so it's 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 a completely different ball game to previous seasons. I think that's just where Cardiff are and all the regions are is they can't afford these finished article players anymore. So. They need to go for players that need to grow and need to develop and need to become better inside the team. And that, that I, I like him, as we've mentioned before. I think he's got a running game. I think he's got a kicking game. And but yeah, the inconsistency has been highly evident. You know, those ten minutes that he sort of went off the boil against Benetton, quite big, you know, quite drastically so. 
and then a little bit of goal kicking issues last week. So yeah, there's 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 moments in his game that needs to be developed, but otherwise, um, yeah, he's one he's he's one that I think Cardiff can Cardiff fans can get excited about and build a season around. Yeah, I I think one of the biggest worries when we came when you know when particularly with losing Jared was you know how are you going to find a ten who's a similar mold because whenever we've had back at tens they've just not you know they they don't play the same way as Jared and you feel like some of the other players step around it whereas I feel like Venus at least fits in that mold you know Thomas Williams is doing some chips over the top which you'd always do for Jared and Tina's knew exactly where he needed to be for that I mean his goal kick needs a bit of work. But he's not a terrible goal kicker, you know. I wouldn't say he's as inconsistent as some, you know. Like Matt, you know, like, I mean, you bring up Manny Labock, and you know, he, you know, he can be hundred percent one day and then two percent the next. It's, you know, it's very hot and cold. So, I think there's promise there. I slightly worried with jo- Jockey's um bench the way he uses, or rather, doesn't use his bench necessarily. Like I feel like, you know, last week I felt like he needed to bring our well. Rob's on and if only just to change change perspective and just bring some fresh energy. Like I feel like Curry, you know, maybe he's not Venus isn't quite up to the conditioning needed to, you know, that step up from Curry Cup to to URC. Um I've not played in either. I mean I've I've played second division rugby for about twenty minutes. Like that's you know, at a time that's say, you know, it's it's nothing. Um but yeah, and then yeah, not using the nines and stuff. But I mean, Thomas Williams had such a good game. There's no way I was subbing him off, particularly when you know you're not going to have him for another couple of weeks. But I think I think he'll get there. I mean, you're right. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to be signing, you know, these fantastic, you know, all rounded tens. But then we, but you know, we also had to find a compromise between that and, you know, maybe getting someone who's a bit rough around the edges or throwing in an academy person who's not really, you know, he's played a bit of Premiership, most Premiership is. Which is a really big step up. So, I, th- I think we just gotta like it a little bit. His goal kick is probably gonna get better as he gets used to the conditions around here. Give him a give him a game in Connacht, and you know he'll be able to kick anywhere. Yeah, I I agree. I think um, I would say I, I really like him. I think he will come good. And I think the point you mentioned um, about signing overseas players and then in three or five years he qualifies for Wales. I actually don't. I personally don't think we should be viewing every signing on, especially younger players, on whether they're going to be Welsh qualified or not. I think, you know, we need a core group of players that are going to be at the club year round. I think that's really something to build on. Um, And I think, you know, is he likely to try and break into the spring squad? Probably not at this point, although... You know, you don't want to say never say never. So if he's here year round and he's kind of like a playmaker, similar to Jared Evans, you know, he was overlooked by Wales. So we ha- we kept him for the bulk of the year. And I think that's really important for us um, going forward. You know, we've got these sort of downsized squads. We need a, a core that the team can build around, I think. Um, which builds us nicely into uh, welcoming our guests. Um, I'll say this evening as we're recording. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. It's very nice of you to invite me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, we were speaking a couple of weeks ago about which guests we wanted on. Um, and I kind of mentioned your, yourself um, at the start because a, you're, this is supposed to be a sports podcast. So you're obviously integral in that kind of um, role at the club and... I think it's quite timely that it's worked out this week in particular with what's sort of happening on Sunday. Um, so for the listeners, could you just give us a quick uh, introduction about yourself and the supporters trust for people who aren't aware, just sort of what it is you do, what you do in the, the trust and what yeah. the supporters trust does. OK, well, I'm Ling Glaster and I'm chair of the CF10 Rugby Supporters Trust, um, one of the founding members. We formed ourselves seven years ago because we felt there was a gap in the supporters arena for people who wanted to uh, have their say and you know sort of bring issues that supporters were feeling um to the to the fore and at that point of course um we were sort of really really worried about whether our our great club that sort of uh, been there since 1876 
you know, we were sort of fighting for the heritage of our club from that time to be actually recognised and that history. And I think we've actually, I think we've been very successful in that. And the club have now totally embraced that heritage. So we're very pleased about that. Um, so, so we've, we're a community uh, benefit society. So we are a sort of formal company. We have a board um, and uh, it costs a pound to join for, for life. So we're not very expensive. And our, our main interest is actually to sort of try to articulate those moans from the terrace and the stands. And uh, we meet, so we meet with uh, Richard Holland, the chief exec, generally once a month, probably at the moment because of the, the World Cup and things, it's been a bit bit more of a break in that. But uh, generally we meet every few weeks. And I'm also a um, member of the Joint Supporters Group Cymru, which brings representatives from all the, from the five supporters groups because Cardiff's got two. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, but they're also uh, Chris Sixteen, which is the Scarlet Supporters Trust, the Dragons, uh, the Dragons and the Ospreys, and we come together as a group. And most recently, um, we formed the Save Our Game campaign because at that point we hadn't even signed a deal for the money. And Steve Phillips, the ex chief exec of WIU, hated the uh, supporters. I think it was easy to say because. Uh, he got terrible press every time we got involved and uh, because we insist on minuting our meetings um, because we, we're supporters organisations. So um, we meet with the WRU once a quarter now. Nigel Walker, one of the good things he's done is reinstigated that, those meetings. So we're meeting with the, the new chair and Nigel Walker and uh, Simon Rimmer, the comms guy, on the 20th of November next. So it's a bit, um, we, you know, there's many things we've done and you can have a look on our website. We've, we've very proud of some of our members who have uh, created one of the best online rugby museums in the world um, with a ultimate aim of getting a proper museum on the site. Um, yeah, I think I've mentioned that before. Obviously there's rumors abound about the uh redevelopment of the site at the Arms Park and I think one thing I would love to see is there's so much history and as you said heritage it's so important not just for us as a club but you know it used to be um or still is in a way the 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 national stadium as well so that kind of combined um I think it's, it's telling you know it's metaphorical but we literally share a wall with the uh the principality stadium it's it's literally physically couldn't get more separated um and yeah, you know, I think a, a a rugby museum would be such an attraction for so many people. Um, not just Cardiff, but if we could get our own museum, if if that's what it needs to be, I think that would be a massive boost for uh, the club and um, potentially a source of income as well, which might be might be useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, it's genuinely one of our real aims, and uh, and I think one that we're, we're very intent on getting. But it's not all about the history, but the history is important. It roots us. It gives us a reason to campaign to be at that uh, on that site at Cardiff Arms Park. It gives us uh, a reason to fight for the future, really, as well. So I think it's it's all integral. So I don't really want us to be bad just as those people who are interested in history, because we are, but very much interested in the future as well. Yeah, I think. Well, if you if you don't um, if you don't know where you've come from, it's difficult to know where you want to go. I think if you look at a lot of the big, you know brands of sports teams if you like a lot of the big football clubs it's all they, they lean into it massively um i think they do that for a reason because it is popular with people and it's, yeah. it's it, it avoids kind of um i don't know plastic franchises you know gets called a lot and, and you don't really want to it's something that matt sherratt is uh very much pushing with his players at the moment sort of that uh that feeling that you that you are part of a have a club with history and you need to be mm. proud of that and you play for the shirt and he's, and he's very much sort of invoking that uh, that side of things as well so that when we are watching our <laughs> um, players at times you know because uh, with experience and the like it's going to be a difficult season but I think 
they want you know they play with pride you know you could hear it in Cameron when it when it's player of the match speech it was lovely wasn't it and, yeah brilliant you know and I think Matt Matt's approached um the um, comms people in Cardiff who've talked to us about getting some more info about various uh, players that they can use as sort of this look this is what you could be this is what you you know this is this is what the history and the the passion that you're following really. yeah there's a, uh, there's a couple of young faces that are really strong you know guys to follow you know you took a well, you know, I've talked at length about Alex Mann but your Theo Cabango's obviously whether he, where he's talking in Welsh or English he's very articulate very you know very well spoken on on and obviously does does his talking on the pitch as well and yeah. that's, that's 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 great to see is that when you say inspiring the next generation what else can be done on that do you think because obviously you know they get the, they get the kids on the pitch at full time and they sign all the autographs that's become a new thing going in the um, well in the last couple of years as well yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we can do our bit, but uh, I think the WRU needs to step up and uh, have a proper strategy for rugby. If it's got one, it, they keep it quite well hidden, don't they? And uh, and, I, and I, I, I know we're often seen as being very critical of the WRU, but, uh, you know, this new regime with the new, uh, the new directors, they've got to start respecting the professional clubs and then they've got to start respecting the community game as well and how that and the academies and and you know it's like the new the new league you know Cardiff and uh, Cardiff and Ponty and Murphy are saying it's commercial suicide if we go into that that new league well you know the the the, the cap is so low that you can hardly put a team together so if you can hardly put a team together how are you going to encourage people to get to, to to come out but I think that whole we need to have respect in ourselves we need to every time they put the shirt on every time somebody goes to you know represents the club they need to be seen to be this is Cardiff and we're in the rugby world you know, the hall of fame and we've been there since 1876 and we're going to be there and we are going to be great again it's uh, been quite a while but we've had the odd uh, moment you know when we you know I stood in Bilbao with the rather unexpected win so we will have times but hopefully when we get our investment invest investor situation sorted then perhaps we can actually start we can start to do what we can do but then calling on the wiu to actually uh you know sort of look at properly at what the threat of the you know the, of, the, of the welsh football team and the whole oil that's gone around that you know you know that people are gravitating to that and we need to find a way to make sure that we do get those new those new players and then you watch you know we watched we're davis's documentary during the week about players going over to hartbury and then ended up in the english system um you know we've got to get our academies right haven't we including for the women because at the moment you know we don't have a cardiff women's rugby club and the WRU say eventually we will be able to have regional women's rugby games again and teams, but not at the moment, not until the academies are sorted. Well, you know, you've got whole generations that uh, are not going to have, you know, we as Cardiff fans could get around the Cardiff women's rugby team as well. It doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist, you can't support them, can you? When you talk yeah. about history, if, that, if just a little look at that museum... We'll we'll show you the history of Car uh, Cardiff women's teams. Yeah. Um, I think in 1905, I want to say, or really something, you know, ridiculous, you know, over a hundred years ago, the history of Cardiff and yeah, and rugby the history team. of the women's rugby during the war. You know, when women's rugby was massive, a bit like women's football was massive, and then and then I think in most of those cases that they they banned women from playing so that it was available to the men when they came back from the war but you know there's some, the real history there and it's uh and we and if you can see people then you can try and emulate them can't you and you're right Theo Cabanga fantastic Ben Thomas ex-captain of Cardiff and Vale College you know and and you know he's he's the he's the poster boy at the Cardiff and Vale College you know it's the ex-captain of that team and you know seeing watching them come on it's great 
I heard a really good saying for that. It's um, if you can't see it, you can't be it, and that yeah. sums it up in terms of if you, if you, if you, and that's why, sort of, you know, people, it really reminds me when people throw the word like woke around when, just yeah. for having having more diverse, um, mm. you're literally just more diverse people on the screen. But if you can't see it, then you're never going to be it, and and it's really important to have those role models for people. Um, I mean, I don't know whether you saw the stat during the week that somebody kindly produced on. Uh, homegrown players in the academy and Cardiff wasn't it 71.8 percent of the players came through the Cardiff Academy so yeah that's brilliant we're, isn't doing, it? we're doing something right but we're just not able to hang on we probably never would hang on to everybody would we but we want the chance to be able to hang on to more um, and uh, and that's why we've been pushing the WRU in terms of funding and why we'll carry on pushing them because uh, you know and and why we'll push them about things like the derbies and wrecking the derbies this year and things like that. You just, they, they, it's, uh, there's still so much to complain about, <laughs> but <laughs> but hopefully we'll get the, you know, the odd positive thing come through. Yeah. I think we've said before that the problem is it just ends up in a moan fest and people don't like listening to people moaning and it yeah. drives, it, that in itself can drive people away. And Absolutely. so you need to be critical when it is time to be critical hopefully you can be constructive about it um that's kind of what we wanted to do with this is you yeah. know, a little bit of voice of positivity try and cut yeah. through some of the uh the white noise a little bit um so i i had a couple of questions myself and then there was a couple from social media that you kind of touched on already all right um okay. so i one thing i wanted to know is um do you ever feel that the amount of time you spend criticizing the wru could be time spent holding Cardiff to account because obviously you're quite um, rightfully vocal and and what we'll do is there's a there's an interview I think it's BBC Five Live um well about the the Barbarians game um, when that story kind of broke we'll pin that underneath uh, the podcast for this when we put that out there but um yeah I think if we had a a really I'll say really good union governing body that was kind of aligned with the professional teams. The energy that you and and the trust and the supporters group, um, the, sorry, the joint supporters groups, could be spent focused on the regions. If you know what I mean, do you ever feel frustrated at how much time you have to focus on an external body? Um, I'm frustrated that they don't always appear to have um, to align. You know, the the regions and the WRU don't align with some kind of forward-looking strategy where they're going forward together where they're actually thinking of each other together so I'm frustrated with that I mean I think we didn't really set out to be I mean as a trust we're very much focused on speaking to to Cardiff and we you know we spend an awful lot of time meeting with Cardiff telling them our views on things and where we think things could be improved I mean you know it's just a little thing but the the pack bar which is the bar opposite the the um to where the shop used to be you know so we sort of spent the last few weeks saying that how awful that is you know it doesn't make anybody feel like they want to spend any time in there um so anyway we've we've, we've managed to get the uh the, the club into some gear and they've managed to get a bit of sponsorship from one of the brewing people to uh get put 50 framed shirts up there and uh, different mm things just to make it look more like a rugby club so you know we we, we chip away at little at little mm. things and we chip away at big things so so please don't get the impression that we don't we we don't speak to Cardiff but we, we we're not we're not in the business of knocking Cardiff where we you know for the sake of it because actually mm. we're all passionate supporters and what we want is for the club to be great so actually most of our you know, it's mostly about suggestions and about gentle persuasion with the WRU I mean I think it was also a similar way but I think towards the end of last year there was frustration that it just looked like they wanted to kill our game they wanted to kill the professional games at teams as it was so that they could recreate something something different that probably they might have wanted to create 20 years ago and it looked like that. So we put an awful lot of energy, you know, because the joint sports group didn't really meet that often before that. But we've put we've we've just felt that it, the last year that it's needed the that energy. 
in it. Um, if I'm honest, it's probably weighing back a bit and we're now focused on our own clubs more. Um, but we've got this agreement that we will meet every quarter with the WRU. So it's much less of a, uh, you know, it's, it's much less of a sort of thing that we do. But, you know, there are things that like, you know, with the Barbarians match, you know, I, you know a lot of supporters wanted to know why on earth did that happen? You know, why have we got a clash of the Barbarians match with Cardiff, with Scarlet's Cardiff? You know, why have we got, why are we undermining the club so much and the, the big paydays of the year, which is what they normally are? And, you know, so we have, we do go and ask those questions and then get, they have admitted it's a mistake. So hopefully by us, us being a bit moany about things like that, it might next year, you never know, that mistake might not be made again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's always, I mean, and I think in particular because of it coincided with the misogyny stuff. Um, and I was one of the very few women chairs or secretaries of a supporters group you know I, mm. I, was, I was obviously it, the folk I I took the role of leading on that for the joint supporters group so I was on a lot of media and it, so it looked like that's what we were spending our whole time for but mm. actually we were being chased on that one in particular I don't think it was important yeah massively important I suppose if if if, if every time you and the trust pop up on BBC. You're talking about the WRU. It's going to seem more like you're talking about yeah. the WRU rather than um, Cardiff, Cardiff rugby itself. Yeah. Um, so one question from oh yeah, uh, sorry, I popped into my head there. You said that uh, the clash with the Barbarians and the Scarlets was a mistake. Um, I'm not sure I actually believe that because um, the WRU also tried to arrange Bristol v Gloucester. For the reverse fixture um so it's i i mean i it's just yeah. a personal opinion how highly how incompetent could the wrb you be to make the same mistake twice if it's such a serious mistake well i mean it's uh i mean it's not just the wru i mean i have to say you know there was a member there was a representative from the regions in that timetable in meeting as well and you know so um the WIU admit, admitted that it was an error. And there's more to come. I mean, I don't think it's very widely known that uh, Judgment Day is probably not going to happen at the stadium this time because they've managed to clash it with a major... Uh, 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 well, we think it might be the Taylor Swift setup, but, you know, they've... Uh, so they're actually looking at the moment to see where they can hold Judgment Day. And they've always said, we've got to have Judgment Day because a lot of supporters don't like Judgment a lot, you know, Some do, but others don't. But we've always accepted it because they reckon it makes a million pound for the four regions. So it's yeah, so something that's been uh, accepted, really. And that's been messed up. <laughs> and so there are, you know, that and that is, uh, you know, it'll be quite interesting to see what happens and where they actually put that. So I think it's about, I don't know if it's a lack of care or because um, yeah, the Bristol Gloucester thing, that was really, I, I, I mean, I was very opposed to that. That's just, you know, invite that. I mean, they were, they were quite unapologetic about that. They're saying it would have made, brought a lot of money in for the game in Wales. So every time you sort of try and criticise, they sort of say, well, that's the stuff that brings the money in, you know. And if that's the whole thing about the Barbarians game, they're saying that when they're not in a non-World Cup year, there would be four internationals outside the Six Nations that brings in money for the wider rugby game in Wales. Because it's a rugby World Cup year, there was only three. So the Barbarian, so it's sort of having they're having to go with it because it makes money and we can't afford to lose it. But they just need to be more joined up thinking. They need to sit there. I mean, you know, if it takes them taking a, a paper calendar in with these are the important dates, you know, this is the derby. This, you know, do not clash the derbies. You know, do, do, you know sort of respect those. And, you know, there are other areas that have derbies that need to be respecting the Irish team. So it's, it's not a thing they shouldn't be able to deal with. 
but between the WRU and the uh, regions and their professional rugby board, there just needs to be a lot more thought into how we don't damage each other's brand and money making. You know, it's uh, yeah. So sorry if I sound moany, but that's what. No, that's fine. I mean, I think going forward, it, an idea, presumably someone else may have had it, but have at least if the Welsh teams are playing away games during that fixture, if it has to happen after the World Cup. Because I looked a lot, in 2019, Osprey's got less than 2,500 fans uh, when they played against the Cheetahs. So it's no surprise they're trying to try something else. And then I think Dragons lost to Zebra that weekend. So um, I I'm think... Not sure. uh, I'm, I'm just saying that, that, that Osprey's game, I'm just I'm, I'm astounded by it. You know, I, this we, year. I don't we think we'd have been picketing the Arms Park <laughs> with, the, you know, if they were trying to take a Cardiff game, a Cardiff home game away, you know, because it's a, it's an Ospreys home game and they've taken it away from the Ospreys and they haven't give, put it in their season ticket. So the Ospreys fans are having to pay, you know, the Ospreys the season ticket support, they're having to pay for that game. Sorry, I'm just it's crazy. <laughs> I think also because it's on a Friday, they're gonna anyone will struggle to travel from from the area. I suppose the counter of that is, and I think Carwin me- we did want to mention this before, but Alan Wynn was also an Ospreys legend as well as a Wales legend. So if there is anyone from the four regions that did want to go to both games, the Ospreys are the only ones who can. Um, so I guess maybe that's why they wanted to keep it on a Friday. I don't know. I think you just. I, I, if they don't, I, I don't know whether they have. The, 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 whenever the, we've asked them about strategy meetings, you know, say, "Oh, we've got a day in a few weeks' time," and you think, you know, it probably needs to be more than a day, and it probably needs to be sort of lots of teams sitting around and then coming together with a strategy and coming up and, and sort of saying what is important to us, what are the important games, what are the important things, and uh, you know, sort of go from there, really. Yeah, I, I, and you know, I fully understand the financials. And we said that if two players deserve a testimonial match, it is Halfpenny and Alan Wynne Jones. Um, it's just such a shame that, um, you know, it's been driven through a derby weekend, especially, but also um, through the league. I think I said if if they'd done it pre World Cup, I think a few other countries had four warm up games, um, whereas we had three and one after. So um, they maybe could have arranged it with a few other retired players, sort of bigger and Tipperick. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's difficult. You know, it would be great for it not to clash, but we're always going to have clashes with those home internationals and with the Six Nations. But I, for me, the uh, the holy grail of the derbies is the thing where I stand. You know, that just should not have been allowed to happen. Yeah. Um. So going on to social media, um. One I think, uh, sorry, I, I, I thought I'd just jump in because I can see Harley trying to subtly put his hand up rather than jumping in. So I thought I'd, I'd give him a chance to ask a question. Uh, <laughs> I'm, t- two, two points. One, just adding on the, the, the DAF scheduling. They wanted to make do a double header with the women's team, forgetting they were in New Zealand for WXV1. So they'd forgotten about an international competition that one of their own teams were in. But I, I just want to go back because obviously, Ali, you said you wanted to talk about some more of the positives and Going back to the point that you know, where I think is a really good story with part. Of, I mean, I think it's CF10 in combination with Health Supporters Trust was actually to get a supporters representative on the Cardiff Rugby Board. Yeah, so I was just wondering if you. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how that worked in the process. Yeah, you know, do you so, think that'd be something that other re- other people might want to get? Well, the Scarlets have already got one, but um, to be fair to them, they got one before us. Um, we It was one of our main aims when we set up CF10 was to get the supporter representative on the Cardiff Rugby Board. Um, it wasn't viewed very um, well for quite a long time, but gentle. this is where perhaps you know, the the meetings that we have, we, we managed to persuade Cardiff over a, a number of years probably about three four years that actually supporters could be trusted to be on the on the board and you know that we were going to have that, that that it was going to be something valuable because i think they realized that 
talking to us about things that you know we could add things and that uh, so eventually they agreed that um to, that we could have a representative and it was agreed that um we would have election and the and the the, the electorate were going to be the CF10 members Cardiff uh, rugby supporters club members and season ticket holders um and the shareholders um and uh, we CF10 decided that we would like David Allen to go forward and we put all our eggs in that one basket and actually he ended up being the nominee and he uh, and and he's been doing that for over two years now um it's an interesting situation he's been fantastic he comes in so they've got a board cardiff rugby have got a board meeting tomorrow so last week we met he met with all the supporters groups and reps to talk about uh, what issues we wanted raising at the rugby board and um, so that he's got an idea of the things that are worrying people or or uh, maybe not worrying people but people would like to see um so he does that and then he reports into the board and he's been very he's a very active member of the board now actually and uh, that's been really successful so he comes to the end of his term in about a year's time and then there'll be another elect there'll be another election for another person so it's got a three-year term um and uh then somebody else can go it's 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 a hard job because i mean i remember Chris 16, which is the Scarlet Supporters Trust, said to us, be careful what you wish for, because when you get a supporter advisor on the board, they won't be able to tell you half the stuff that goes on because they'll be sworn to secrecy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's true. So there is lots of stuff that David can't tell us, but he's been very successful in with David from that side and me meeting with Richard Holland from this side of getting them to tell us more than they perhaps would have done in the past. But there's still things they can't, you know, and, you know, we don't get prior knowledge of somebody new being signed or things like that because it's all, you know, but but it's been quite useful. So, I mean, I think I think it's the way to go and I think it's been quite a, a good experiment, but, it, but but it needs people to be interested to do it as well. So, you know, the next time the post comes up, it will need people to put themselves forward and to be as committed as David is to actually meeting with the supporters groups you know so uh, yeah we we're, we're quite pleased with how it's gone so far but but it's uh, early days did you have any more questions Carwin or Harley before I move on to sorry I just kind of took the uh, conversation away there no i i've i've only got one more which is i i You've, you've mentioned all the good you do if for general fans how what's the best way you know practically what's the best way of having an influence through getting in touch with yourselves or etc cetera, etc cetera? well there's lots of ways isn't there i mean you lot are having an influence you were mentioned in the last meeting i had with cardiff rugby so uh you're already being uh you're already being listened to so uh, we won't get through our, our heads through the door after that mention thanks <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It's I think they're they're really pleased. I mean, you know, that, I mean that's the one thing with with them is I think, uh, you know, they clearly don't want criticism and things, but they want but but people talking and people being passionate enough to do something. So you know, doing what you're doing is a good thing. So that's your outlet, isn't it? Um, you know, joining join, joining CF10 would be a, a good way, and you could uh, you know come to our board meetings. You could get involved in. We've we we have a very uh, and we've we've got a, a it's not Twitter now is it whatever it is group you know that 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 uh, that we're fairly uh, that people can really have their say in the week that they cover it and uh, you know we're not too prescriptive about things and so as long as you're sort of basically supporting Cardiff and uh, not doing not not doing Cardiff down then we're fairly up for it but uh, you know that and then you know there's other ways the Cardiff Rugby Supporters mm -hmm. Club. You know, that's them more of a social um, group with um, 
the, the organising the coaches and uh, things and the organising, they did a lot of fundraising for the, um, oh, I'm going you know, say, uh, sort of, uh, when, um, for players and uh, things and but so there's lots of different ways but in terms of having a say with the club you know i think joining one of us or doing what you're doing is that you know because it, it's quite interesting isn't it because people that they, they do listen and they you know they listen they, yeah say so they'll probably hear me telling you that they listen but they they do listen to to people but i think the the main they, they they're very good I think the club is pretty good at listening to put supporters. What they, I think they'd rather listen to what your views are direct than have somebody standing up in the papers and saying you're all terrible. It's all awful. I think they would rather know, you know, what what's annoying people. So they've been pretty good with that. And then, there's, but the other way, if they don't want, if they don't want to join any of that, is that David Allen has got an email that's on the Cardiff Rugby website to see supporter director and he'll happily have emails from any any supporter giving their views about things that are going on so i mean i think we've got a fairly we, we, it's a lot better than it was seven years ago i would say <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's I, good. i'm quite proud of that <laughs> yeah i think it's moving in the right direction i think as, as you said i feel that um over the years it, it especially probably last year i mean i was quite close to cancelling my season ticket this year when they announced the barbarians game I actually looked at the cancellation policy because I was so yeah. uh, furious. Um, but apparently, it's not—it's not that easy to cancel your season ticket once you bought it, which is quite clever, I think. But um, I, I mean, I would have renewed. I will say, I would have renewed anyway, just because um, I think it was, it was just a moment of sort of panic. I just felt like I was being mocked, um, which I don't really appreciate. So, yeah. Um, if, if I think it's difficult to look up how maybe the WRU have acted without coming to the conclusion that. They're not happy with the way things are and wanted to change it by oh, I think so, yeah. dragging it down. So if Cardiff Rugby are listening, I would like to say, you know, thank you for continuing. You know, I think just existing is an achievement um, and it doesn't get said enough, really. Um, I, think so. I, I think we we've got lots and lots and lots of things on our agenda that we'd like to have changed at Cardiff Rugby. But over the last year, we have brought up that many of them because it's all been about survival. And, you know, there's no point us asking for grand things at the ground if we can't put a team out, and you know, and, you know, and, uh, you know, and, you know, and, the, and, you know, the back, the back room stuff, you know, we, you know, we jokingly talk about the, the communications team. Well, the communications team is, you know, two people, you know, to do. And that's all the comms. That's, you know, and, and so... You know, it's 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 down to the bare bones, really, and and I think you're right. I mean, I think our first and priority has been over the last year has been help our club survive. Mm. But we've got the back list of things that when our club survive, <laughs> and hopefully we get a new investor. And you know, don't we, do we quite like? You know, there's lots of issues about about uh, that we'd quite like changes, but uh, but we're also quite. Yeah, we we know that these things can take time. Some things are more urgent than other things. Yeah. So on that note, uh, we've been asked what what are the timescales for new shareholder announcements. Obviously, everyone's very excited. Um, I'm yeah. guessing how I, much can you tell us? Or I can't do you know? tell you. I can't tell you anything because I don't really know. But what <laughs> I do, but but I did ask. You know, but, you know, I said, is there any news? And I've been told from a couple of sources it's very close, and and that's literally all I've been told. It's a you know, you know we signed the heads of terms agreements, and uh, it's very complicated legalese now going on. Um, we have submitted a list of about twenty questions to be included in some kind of Q and A when it or, you know some kind of frequently asked questions document when it when it's finally announced about. You know who that who they are. <laughs> you know that's number one question, isn't it? Really, um, and you know where we go from there. So, they, the board have got those lists of questions. It's all and apparent. So all I can say is we've been told it's close. What close means? I have no idea. 
but mm. we'll keep asking. But I, I'm confident that I'm not being bullshitted on this one. You know, that's good. I guess you, you normally tell. I mean, sometimes you, it's really obvious if if you get told the same thing over and over, you can kind yeah. of tell. So, um, I think one thing I wanted to ask about on the back of that was during the. And again, I, I understand the legalities of it, but during um, when Dai Young was suspended, uh, it was a long period where we weren't getting much communication. Then the season ticket renewals kind of came out and it was kind of like, mm. um, you know, please buy your season ticket. And at that point, we didn't have a, you know if we had a head coach or a fly off or what was going on. Um, so yeah, is there much of a commitment to, I know you said they've come out since and said that they want to commit to more frequent communications obviously yeah. it's difficult if the communications team is two people but is there a kind of a commitment that we i think everyone's just desperate for hope and you know yeah. just little little crumbs i think would be enough to to keep people uh, going it's that was just the most frustrating period wasn't it and i mean i just kept having to tell myself you know, if I was in employment and and and, I, and that was going on, then I wouldn't want my employment position being discussed over uh, over the media. And that that you know and that 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 was the very real reality of the situation that you were dealing with. And and to a certain extent, we'll still probably you know some people might think that they've got the full story from various sources, but probably but we probably never really know what went on um but i think they dealt with it with integrity in terms of the uh the not discussing it until things were sorted but oh my god didn't it frustrate us all i mean we were just weekly sort of say you just can't go on like this this is just ridiculous you know and have we signed any you know have we signed anybody there was contracts waiting to be signed until it was yeah as well you know sort of players contracts and the like and it was just the most awful situation um i was told that changes in the way contracts have been drawn up have been made that means that they aren't in a situation where they can't discuss squad details and the like if anything like that ever happened again which i think that that was part it was in I think that was partly the contract situation. I think the club were hurt by the way people were feeling and they, you know, about the fact that they couldn't communicate. Um, didn't make it any better for us, lot waiting for anything. But I think it has meant that they've, that they have got a commitment to giving us more communication. And we are being a bit patient with them at the moment because of the investor situation, because... In a way, if they communicated much at the moment, you'd still be saying, "Well, you know, who's our, who's this new investor? Who, you know, wh why isn't that sorted?" So I think they've probably got a period of grace from us for a little longer, and then, the, then they've committed to regular, you know, regular Q and A's, regular um, information. I mean, I think they've been quite good with emails out in terms of mm. the regular emails nowadays. I think that's got good. Um, we probably need to hear a bit more from the chair and chief executive type things at times. So, I mean, I think, you know, big room for improvement. And um, I know the board have discussed it and David and a couple of others put a paper to the board um, about, about the improvement to the, to the comms and the regularity of the comms. And the like. So, and I think, and part of the reason they asked us up for to, for questions for the new investor was so that they can provide something substantial when they do do the sort of full announcement. I mean, I think they've got to write to shareholders first, um, formally. So, and then then they can announce it after that. But CF ten hour shareholder, so we should get a letter, so we should know a bit more. Yeah. We've, we've got our little our little group of shares, but we've also got proxies from um, a lot of members. So we're actually surprisingly the eighth biggest shareholder in Cardiff Rugby. Um, not very big shareholder because <laughs> most of them are held by other people. But it does mean that you know we will get the letter telling us what's going on as well. So sorry, yeah. I can't give you any more info. No, on that. no that's fine. I mean, I think as you said, everyone's just kind of hopeful. Um... Like you said, I think as long as 
I think the difference is now, whereas before we kind of expected bad news to be coming and people were getting more frustrated, especially when you can't then announce signings. I think now we kind of know there's good news coming. I think you that grace period, like you said, will probably be longer because you think, well, yeah, yeah, we're not talking light at the end of the tunnel as opposed to a train at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the 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 sad thing in a way, isn't it? That I, I you know, I don't know what it means in terms of playing budget or anything because there's cap, there's a cap anyway, isn't there? On playing budget and the like, but what it'll mean for that, I don't know. Um, but at least a period of stability would be really rather rather good and then you know and i think i think most long-term you know supporters probably have accepted that this year is going to be difficult but there's only so many years you can have like that you know people we, we've got to start building the crowds yeah i think they build that based on success yeah especially when you hear people say right this this is short-term pain for long-term gain and you think well the last 10 years haven't been drenched in glory so um it's, it's difficult to keep asking people to rebuild and then the rug gets pulled out again and i was rebuilding it them it is i says we're all a bit bonkers really aren't we <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, sorry i probably shouldn't have said that but also that's right bonkers. <laughs> um so uh, jonathan carr has asked um you kind of mentioned it earlier but uh, any information on uh why cardiff rfc not um or weren't applying for the edc and since that kind of announcement has been made has there been any further negotiations uh between us and the wru i again i'm a bit useless when it comes to this stuff i, I we i haven't got the info but i asked david um I mean, I wasn't really sure whether it was an RFC decision or whether it was Cardiff rugby decision, you know, so whether it was sort of a wider decision. And I think the I think the Steph Thomas articles were pretty accurate. Um, you know, and that uh, but it is being discussed by the board on Wednesday. So um I suppose we'll get more out of it there. But I mean I think it's based on uh, it's based on the on the, the salary caps and the number of games and the like. I mean, I think it's been quite, I suppose it's been quite useful that Murphy and Ponty and us have sort of stuck together as a region because, you know, most of the other areas are actually put in now, haven't they, apart from Clinefly. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a frightening situation. But uh, I think um, Stan Thomas, I think, said that you know, it would be commercial suicide as it, as it is. So I suppose at the moment, we just got to hope that they've got it right, and that maybe this it's some kind of brinkmanship, and you know things. But, but no, I don't have any more info than that, other than that it's been discussed on Wednesday at Cardiff Rugby Board. Yeah, it's an interesting one that because obviously I think it's two two clubs per region, isn't it, that are going to be part of this EDC, or well, that was the plan. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, North Wales represented by RGC. So, if if there's a um, compatriots in arms sort of approach from the, the, the Cardiff region representatives, then it, it sort of scuppers those plans a little bit and maybe um, mm. forces the hand of the WIU. But uh, yeah, it, it, it does make it a little bit, yeah, have an mm. interesting situation going forward and whether or not that those ties between Cardiff, Merthyr and Ponty continue to be as strong going forward, we'll see. Yeah, and I don't know what their deadline for making that. I mean, I know the deadline for the expressions of interest is gone. I don't know yeah. what their deadline for making the final team well, league is. The, the discussion the, the initial idea on that was around the sort of December period. So um yeah. yeah that's coming up sooner rather than later. Well I mean I think we'll be raising it we'll raise it with the WRU as well on the 20th of November whether there's anything they'll tell us. They'll probably just tell us that Cardiff region's got it wrong but uh, we'll so we'll sort of raise it because it's uh, yeah. I thought when I when I saw the first group of people, you know, Cardiff Murphy and Ponty coming out, I thought, oh, maybe it's going to be a wider thing, and maybe there'll be maybe the, the Dragons region or something as well. But it hasn't worked out that way, has it really at the moment? Well, we'll see. Okay. Sorry, Carol and Harley, did you have any more questions? I thought I saw Harley 
and put his hand up. Although that might just be me panicking because I didn't let him speak earlier. Um, no, I mean, as as I have got the floor, and you sort of mentioned the investors and whether it's signing new hookers or stuff. I mean, one one thing that's always always comes up and is always battered around every couple of years is the redevelopment of CAP. Obviously, that that involves interaction with um, Cardiff Athletic Club. So I don't know if the trust um <laughs> have been trying to deal with them to try and sort of make them a bit help make them a bit more amenable. Or was... Well, it's got more complicated than that now. It's so the Cardiff Athletic Club have set up a prop co that's uh, so. It's not even a matter of just dealing with the Cardiff Athletic Club. Then the, the, they've got the Prop Co, which is another group. I mean, yeah, we raise it regularly because I mean, it's you know quite apart from whether it'd be nice to have a brand new stadium or a sort of new stand or anything like that. You know, there are just major Working problems toilets. to do with disability access, to do with uh, you know, sort of there's so many. You know, the, the women's toilets, which is a big thing that's raised. You know, there's just so many. You know. The, the, the museum, the 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 the, the bar facilities for um, away supporters as well, and there's so many things that we could get that could be put right by some investment. But at the moment, it's gone into a black hole. Um, as far well, I mean, I'm sure the maybe the Cardiff Athletic Club and Propco wouldn't call it that, but you know, we 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 I've got no news on that. We ask every time we meet, and eyes get raised and uh you know i mean i'm hoping that the prop code does does do a job and that we do get because there is a point at which you can only keep ignoring it for, for so long really can't you it's sort of uh, i mean i've seen i've seen two or three different plans for stadiums and stands over the years all that look great but uh, none of which have one of which have appeared. Um, so uh, I don't know what else to say to you, really. It's that we're massively frustrated. Massively. It's like one of those questions on the agenda. Redevelopment of Cardiff, of, of Cardiff Arms Park? No. Propco still haven't reported. But, you know, I mean, the, there was a couple of months ago when it sounded like they were getting a bit further on. And there's some idea that they may have been doing, you know, uh, speaking to hotel investors and things on for the other on the north stand area and about you know sort of facilities there, but that seems to have gone quiet as well. So sorry, I can't give you any more info on that. That's okay. As you said, it's it's I think so many different. It feels like there's so many different parties and um, within. Cardiff as well as outside of Cardiff that we're kind of involved with it it's not just as simple as um, we are the most we are incredibly complicated club really mm. <laughs> it's a, I mean it's probably been the saving grace of us sometimes you know uh, that uh, having the most complicated setup but uh, but it make, make sometimes means that te things take a long time yeah um I think if if Carwin or Harley haven't got anything else, we'll we'll say thank you there. You're welcome to stay with us. We're about to move on to the Scarlets game. Um, yeah, that that was my only question was to lead into that was to ask. You know, we've mentioned all the you know justifiable frustrations with this weekend's game, but there is a game going on, and yeah. how do you see it going? Well, I was I'm not sure I had that much faith about us going to the Dragons. Really, <laughs> that was really rather a pleasant. Uh, that was rather pleasant, wasn't it? Um, I think sadly for the uh, sadly for the Scarlets, it'll be a very poor crowd, and it might well be just as frustrating a game as the Dragons game was. You know, I'm I feel difficult saying maybe the Scarlets will win, but it sort of feels like that may happen. But uh, I mean, they've got a lot to make up for from the. Uh, the South African games, haven't they? Yeah. They've got a lot of pride to... Uh... But we were looking, you know, we were looking better. I mean, the game against uh, you know, Benetton, you know, our team just looked tired, didn't they? After the first half, you know, it just they just changed. But yesterday, at least they, you know, they, they kept in there and, you know, we're, we're, you know we, we can put up a fight and 
derbies are always the one where we should put up the fight. So uh, what I hope is that they shock me and they come back with a win and uh, and I I feel bad for ever for ever doubting them really. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I am backing us this this weekend. Oh. I've, I've said I've said this every game so far. Um, I'm fifty percent right so far. So, uh, <laughs> um, actually, I think Scarlets have had such a awful run out in South Africa. I think oh, it, it's it's it'll be a fifty fifty whether they rebound and rally or their confidence is so low. I think we'll we did probably get a lot more out of the game than I think the average fan would have seen on on Sunday, and then. Hopefully, if we translate that onto a performance on the pitch, as you said, I think it's. It, I'm hoping there will be a a crowd, um, whether there will be or not. This is my first game out in um, Parky Scarlet, so I'm I'm looking oh, forward to it? that. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm I'm off for half term. I'm going over to uh, see my family. My dad lives over in West Wales on the Thursday, so we're coming back via the game. So um, I thought we'd we'd hit that up on the way. Um, so I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I'm hoping that I mean I'm hoping a decent a decent amount of Cardiff fans make the way there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know whether I don't know whether they will, but you know we you know we called called the people to go there, and uh, you know sort, sort of uh, and you'd hope that a lot of the Scarlets fans almost out of defiance would go. Mm. And, you know, but, so, yeah, I feel bad now saying that I'm not sure Cardiff are going to win because I should <laughs> be going to win every game, shouldn't I? I uh, don't don't feel bad. I'm Mr. Positive on this one. Carwin's Mr. Negative slash oh, neutral. We haven't discovered what Harley's going to be yet. Well, I oh, I predicted a draw last week, so I'm I'm standing on that was that was that was positively that that was positive for me. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, the, the fans to... the fans. Sorry, go on. No, I used to have a mantra when we were travelling around watching Cardiff. Which you don't go away expecting to win. <laughs> you, have the, you have the good weekend then, and if you do win, then you have an even better weekend. It's like don't bet on your own team sort of yeah. approach, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> really? yeah, win all our home games, go away. If you get the odd one, great. And so it's yeah, the life of a Cardiff fan, really. If you you know, if you were thinking that you'd win everyone, you'd never go anywhere. Whereas uh, you might just go and enjoy the crack. <laughs> um. I'm I'm actually positive going to back Gallup this week. I'm going to say Cardiff are going to win. I I was very impressed by Cardiff against Scarlets in preseason. I thought, yeah, that was a very dominant yeah. display. Despite you know, I know I thought the scoreline actually didn't quite reflect how dominant Cardiff were. And um, yeah, I think Cardiff can win this weekend. I I I hope for the Scarlet's sake that they put in a good performance because I I. I think otherwise they're going to be under a bit of pressure going into that week four. But Cardiff, we've shown good glimpses, albeit, you know, 40-minute performance against Benetton. Or whatever, we count that as a performance last week <laughs> on the weekend. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm am going to back Cardiff to win. Uh, I, I, the You mentioned the fans. The added complication, obviously, for the fans is the both sides have a, I suppose, now have an added... Um, what's the phrase? An added uh, fire in the debate of this Wales game going on with Lee Halfpenny's retirement, and I suppose that uh, I can understand some fans wanted to pay tribute to him as well for the, his influence on both yeah. club and national sides. But um, yeah, hopefully there's a good turnout from uh, both respective fans for on Saturday. Yeah, hope so. I'm How going about to you, Harley? I'm going to take Cardiff with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. So also not 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 uh, not on rap as it's recording it this week as it's recording at the same time as this. So I, I sent my prediction to Lee and I predicted uh, I predicted a Cardiff win. Uh, I think we're probably losing a lot less. So I know neither team are losing that many more players to to Wales than yeah. I think. I think Scarlet. I think losing Plumtree is going to be. He's one. Mm. He's one of their big shining lights. So I think that's probably going to be quite a loss. The one fit I am slightly worried at the tight head berth because obviously we lose Nazarati. I imagine um, Parker, Guillaume Parker is going to be banned. Well, I said I didn't even see that's one thing. I didn't even see an announcement on that. No, um, I haven't seen either. You know, not even from the URC, which you know, I just assumed right, it's high tackle. He's probably going to be out for three, three yeah. games, three, four games. Yeah, I, th- I think it would be minimum three possible reduction to two on tackle school. But yeah, I'd sort of min- minimum of two weeks, but I haven't seen anything either. Yeah, it's, but 
Yeah, so I'm slightly worried. So I think it was it. We're probably looking at um, oh, uh, Listerick and well, I'm guessing Will Davis King will have to step up for them. I'm not, and then well, it's the young lad in the academy. But I, I feel like I should know know some of these depths a bit better, having a, done a little depth chart a while back. But I've, I've forgotten half the names now. But yeah, I think that's one area right. where I'm slightly worried. But I think I, I think we. With our defense just looks so much more cohesive, and it looks like you know. I mean, that's one thing I think we can rely on. If we if there was a Cardiff DNA, it's really dogged defense, and then showing some fancy stuff uh, when we do eventually get the ball. If, yeah. if I was to add one other concern, it's Gareth Davis being back for Scarlets likely, and perhaps I don't know on fitness, but if he is back fit, he was flying in the World Cup, and that's a uh, play I'd you know. If you put your Cardiff shirt on, I'd rather not see yeah. the weekend. Although, on, on as far as seeing internationals, it's it's great to see him yeah. uh, back sooner rather than later. I, I um Wales rest still. That's that's the only. I didn't actually realise he was in consideration, but um because I was going to say that our defence is good, and I think they losing Hardy and Costello. Mm. Um, you know, I didn't really. I think we would be able to snuff them out. It would just be that scrum if that is. Under underpowered because of the, uh, the prop situation, then I don't think it would be. It might not be a particularly pleasant game, but um, uh, we'll we'll draw it to a close there. I think um, we'll say thank you very much for our guest who's who's just alerted us that um, she has to drop off. Yeah, I'm really um, sorry about that. No, it's fine. It's uh, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. We, both of our guests so far have been really generous. Um, had a lot to talk about. So thank you so much for joining us and and sharing yeah. the information you can yeah i'm sorry it's not as much as i'd like to you know and uh, but uh you know quite happy to come on again or get one of the other people from the board you know we have a different perspective you know the, we've got people who are sort of involved in the museum we've got people who are involved in sort of different things so you know and uh, people who are involved in writing the program notes that we put up and the blogs and things so very happy for you to ask CF10 in it again yeah. and find somebody to come come up. So all, thanks, thanks for asking me. All that would That's be brilliant. brilliant. That's great. Thank you. Uh, you know, any anniversaries to get some of the sort of history behind it would be fantastic to get in the future. Yeah. So thank, yeah, thank you so much, Lynn. Okay then. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Illuminating. And she's gone. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, it's good to see more um perspective and insight than than you know because i don't really know anything about the club really in terms of i think how it's governed internal governance and structures is baffling to me so um but yeah i'm glad um we've been talked about which is interesting yeah i um, i also need to shoot off because i've got an indian waiting so i i yeah, take Ooh, away, wow. so i'm uh I'm on that. Um, I'm excited for that at the moment. So that's not my priority. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us, everyone uh, listening. If you if you've got anything to share or engage with us, then uh, please drop onto the socials. We'll we'll have this uploaded either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and we look forward to another weekend out in the Scarlet's territory. Hopefully, we come away with a second win. Um, that'll be two out of three, which would be good for us. Zero for three for them. Um, but we need to take everything we can get this season. So um thanks for listening and we'll catch you all next time. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right.